man. You ain't smoke cold, man. I ain't doing shit, man. You know? Timmy, y'all ready to start, man? Y'all know what it is. What's up? I go by the name CD Cole, CD Film, whatever the fuck you want to call me. Um, this is the first episode of this motherfucking podcast. I wasn't even going to do no podcast, but shit, I guess we doing one now. Um, we at the motherfucking factory in Memphis, Tennessee. I got my boy Charleston White. And I got the cussing pastor. Yeah, man, thing, I'm about to say he cussing in front of the pastor like this. You're a man, guy, you don't feel wrong man. cussing in front of the pastor like that? Man, this is a production studio. We trying to get some, you know. I ain't that nigga cussing in church. <laughs> pastor, one time I fucked in church. You know that Me shit? Me too? Oh, you had to? Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 no, nah, Pastor, I was a kid. I didn't know no better. Well, I wasn't a well, kid. <laughs> nah, you know, you and she know. Wasn't either. And she wasn't <laughs> Now nah, you remember they used to have the kids, they, they used to do the church lock-in. They, they used to do the church lock-in. And, 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 shit. Well, we, we and, call and, it shit in down here. Yeah, so they would do the church lock-in. All night long. All night long, and they would have the older kids watching the younger kids. <laughs> everybody was fucking. Yeah, everybody was watching nothing. Nah, man, everybody fucking. And yeah, man, uh, I think I was probably about 12 years old uh, in, the, in the seventh grade. I was going to Hutchinson <laughs> Junior High. Uh, and I went with my homeboy Sherwin Cox. Where you from? I'm from Fort Worth, in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Okay. I'm from Fort Worth, but I claim Dallas. Okay. You know, like the niggas from here claim the California streets. Yeah. Yeah, nigga. Yeah. yeah, like yeah, 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 like the niggas from Memphis. Yeah, yeah, claiming what's, the gang bang. What you doing out here in Memphis? Oh, uh, nigga, did niggas don't know this? This my second or third home. Okay. Uh, a uh, Memphis between Memphis, Nashville, uh, Florida. Uh, Detroit, uh, Alabama, Mississippi. Uh, you know, according to my analytical data, uh, since, since since the beginning, this has been been my biggest fan base. Uh, so so. What picked you up, man? Uh, a frustration in the community. Uh, the, the niggas, the niggas, uh, the, the gang banging niggas on the south side had shot up this ninety two year old woman house on Hattie Street. Uh, and they shot up her house by mistake, uh, looking for this nigga named Big Pond. Big Pond is, is a nigga who was raised from a good mother. His mama worked at the sheriff's department, but he mm -hmm. went and played gangster, big old gangster, black ass nigga. So uh, some niggas shot up the woman house next door, man, 92 year old woman. Now she lived here by herself because she owned the house, and her daughter and them still across the street. So around the time that they shooting the house up, this is around the time that the daughter say mama got up and went to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. The woman up and the bullets just flying over her head. Many niggas had uh, over 22 different rounds or uh, three different assault rifles that went through this woman's house. So when I saw it on the news, uh, I partnered with the Fort Worth Police Department gang unit, uh, two officers, uh, Sergeant Wheeler, which was a white boy, Officer Charles Rogers, and, uh, and, 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 and Officer Owens. Uh, so yeah, man, I, I had them reach out to the lady. So so me 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 and my youth organization uh, can go repair help repair a house. Okay. So so at this time, the Black Lives Matter movement was just starting to begin and jump off. Mm -hmm. So I was like, no, nah, Black Lives, how Black Lives Matter and you niggas doing so? Yeah. Uh, so I started getting a lot of backlash for for not being a supporter of the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, and then I had niggas in the community start calling me a snitch, but I, I ain't no snitch. So uh, I want to be a snitch. <laughs> yeah, I, so I became, I want to be a snitch. Okay. Yeah, fuck you bitch ass niggas. Uh, <laughs> nigga need to tell on you whole ass nigga to shot up the woman house. So then a 16 year old got killed playing blood. So I, I, I did a barbecue, a uh, fundraiser to help raise money in the blood neighborhood in front of all the blood niggas who claimed and nigga did no nigga help support to bury this, this baby. Okay. And then the pastor niggas, you know, they overcharging yeah. the mama because she got insurance. They overcharging her. How she still need to pay $5,000, nigga, she got insurance. Yeah. Come on, bitch ass nigga. So the pastor got mad and pulled out a wad on me. Uh, Bishop Kirkland pulled out a wad on me, called me broke ass nigga. Hurt my motherfucking feeling because I was broke, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, man, I came to the internet voicing my frustration. Uh, and, and so uh, that became my outlet. Yeah, that, that that became my outlet. As I as I uh, I was teaching at JD Hall Learning Center every Friday. Uh, I was going to almost every Texas Juvenile Justice Department uh, uh, maximum security for facility for the young kids. Uh, I was I was speaking at the churches, uh, but everybody was using me to make money. 
So they, they'll give me a gas card. They'll give me a five hundred dollar gas card. They may give me. So so I started learning how to how to charge a, a honorarium fee. But okay. but but I'm becoming angry. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. the, the internet was they came with their live button. So that that became my that became my outlet. Uh, but I was really becoming angry, and I was really starting to hate you, bitch ass niggas. But I would go get in the shower and pray, man, God don't let my heart be hard toward my own people, because I don't I don't want to hate nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, nigga, I didn't even want to hate white folk when they were trying to get a nigga to hate white folk. When we were gang banging, I didn't even hate the nigga who were running red. It was just nigga was just going through anger phases, you know. So uh, that the internet became my outlet to uh, release my anger and my frustration, so my heart don't become hard. So you, you think you feel you know how to manipulate the internet at this point? Yeah, I did. Uh, any motherfucker listening to me, nigga, manip manipulate them if they listening with their feelings. Uh, I can't I can't manipulate you if you're listening with logic and reason. Mm -hmm. But if you listening with your feelings, so I started playing on everybody's feelings, playing the villain, nigga, to make a motherfucker mad to hear what I'm saying. So I, I learned how to do that from 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 speaking to children. So when I would go into the schools and talk to kids, I have my shirt tail tucked in, nigga might have on some fresh boots, little old, you know, cocksucker hat with the bow tie on, no jewelry, just gold teeth. Well, the kids identify with a nigga because the gold teeth, but they looking at it how a nigga dress. Mm -hmm. It's how, oh, man. So I, I, I would have to learn a way to grab the kids' attention. So, nigga, I learned to tell them what they want to hear so I can eventually start telling them what they need to hear. For instance, yeah, nigga, I caught a murder case when I was 14 years old. I see the nigga sit up. Yeah, I caught a murder case, and then we killed the white man. Yeah, nigga, and I done some pimping. Nigga, I used to pimp on my kids' mama. Nigga, I had my baby mama selling push me. She jumped, so I would kick all that mm -hmm. to them, right? So uh, now they listen. Only to tell them how my life transformed and what I'm doing today. So I came and did that to the same thing on the internet. You, you play a villain, so I walk you back. You know, so, so if I catch a nigga emotional, uh, I'm going to play on his emotions to see if I can walk him back to his intelligence. Mm -hmm. and, and if he can't, yeah, I'm going to play on this stupid ass in his, in his feelings. Because you can't think logical if you're, emo if you're caught into your emotion. Yeah, so. So that's why. Do you, so, think, do you think like folks try to play on your emotion now? Uh, no, they try, to play, they, they try to play on my intellect because I don't show no emotions. Nigga, I'm a, I play a fool. I come online to play a fool. So let me just say this, right? So if you're not trained, uh, it's really nothing that you can do outside your emotions. You have to be trained, homie. You have to. That's why police go through trainings. That's why pilots go through trainings. Because if that plane go to crashing and you become, you can't, your training got to kick in. Boom, boom. You're trained. You put your emotions, so training allows you to put your emotions to the side. We're not being trained in our household. That's why the Bible says you train up this motherfucker. You can't raise him, you can't teach him. Train up a child. Nigga, we ain't training now, son, bitch. So I, I told my mama one time, mama, you gave us a great home life. You, you provided us a great environment. But you didn't raise us, you had to go to work. And when you got out from home for work, mama, you were tired. Yeah, we had food, but mama, you were tired. So it's hard to raise a kid on your own, let alone train the motherfucker. What training do a nigga have? Nigga don't have no Boy Scout training? Nigga get a little football training, but if you ain't good in football, then coaches don't train you how to be better. They sit your ass down over there. And they ain't got no coach helping the ones that don't know how to become better with training. They focus on the ones that they can train, that already got the skills and the gifts. But very few coaches can take the kid who don't have no skills, no gifts, and train him to be gifted in a sport. Nah. So That's nigga, I went and got some training, huh? That's facts. So nigga can't beat me with this training. Nigga, I, not only that, I went to law school. I was a pre-law student at Texas Wesleyan University. That was my so you a smart motherfucker. A smart motherfucker. A smart, and I made the dean's list. I mean, uh -huh. and, and I've done national studies with, with, with the Walter Conkright uh, School of Journalism. Motherfucker don't even know what that is. Uh, nigga, I've been on the front page of the American Bar Association Journal. Nigga, that go over most niggas' heads. Yeah. I've been on the front page of the ABA Journal, homie. And what is that? American Bar Association. Dude, nigga, much trouble attorneys. you done been in with the law, you don't know what the American Bar is. That's your judge, your prosecutor, your lawyer, that's everything to do with the criminal courts. They have to take that in order to become a Everybody, a homie. So, nigga, if you think these judges ain't read, nigga, that's how I can run circles around these niggas. These niggas went read the 48 laws of power that don't work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Nigga, I know law. I know history. I know science. I know political science. So now, nigga, I know how to research. I know how to write papers. I know how to find out what. In, in college, you can't write a paper and say, hey, I got this information from Google. Failed. Because okay. Google is not a credible source of information. Okay. okay. Yeah. Google is not a credible source. Google tell me in the whole household arguing over what Google done said. Google is not a credible source of information. Because anybody can put anything on Google. Anybody can put anything on Wikipedia. These are not credible sources. So that's why when you Google something, the first thing that come up, that's not credible. Whenever you're looking for information, the first thing that come up is not credible because they paid to they be paid at the to top like, of this mm -hmm, engine okay. site. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, man, that's why I run circles around. I really have to dump myself down and play dumb and stupid online. That's why, nigga, I, I can't have. That's why Cam Newton had to, nigga, sit his ass down. He couldn't, nah, all, nigga. Because I spoke before Congress. I've been on a private phone call with Barack Obama after the Baltimore and Ferguson rise. I was selected and elected to campaign with Donald Trump to the three key battleground states, my nigga. How nigga gonna beat me talking? Come on, now. That's an accolade. Come on. So, but I come play dumb for the dumb niggas, because that's my audience, the dumb <laughs> niggas. Because only 33% of most niggas online, kids can read on or above their grade level. Think about this. Most motherfuckers with kids, only 33% of motherfuckers you see with kids can read on or above their grade level, but they online talking like they smart. And if I ask a nigga when the last book you read, nigga can't, he go tell me a prison book. <laughs> Which is why you shouldn't be sitting down with niggas named Lil Pistol Star. Well, I don't know who Lil Pistol Star was. I was booked by the Superior Shop. Okay. So I don't know what they had going on. I don't even know who, why he in here. The, whoever this little pistol nigga is with a mask on with patent leather shoes on, tennis right. shoes. So you went over there and did an interview with them? With, with the Superior Shop. They've been trying to book me for months. Okay. But I, had to, I made a comment to them online. They saw a video of me going to city council. I went to city council every Tuesday for two years straight. I never missed a Tuesday. They would have to drag me out that motherfucker sometimes. I would address my mayor. I would address the city manager, I would address the city councilman, and the city secretary, because that's who run the police. They made, sure, they made sure you went last at the time, too. Yeah, they, because, because I'm very effective in how I articulate. You know this when I get in front of white folks, I don't, yeah, 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 nah, 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 uh, uh, uh. That's only for the dumb nigga. Because <laughs> I got to dumb myself down because I'm thinking as I speak. So when I'm talking to the dumb nigga, I got to go, yeah, yeah, nah, nah, because I'm processing what I'm trying to say so the dumb nigga can get the message. Uh, and you giving them the guy. I, ta I tailor my message to the audience. I don't talk, nigga, I used to speak at the Tarrant County GOP Republican Party, Tarrant Star Republican Women's Club at a country club every week. What, what was it at? Tarrant County GOP Republican Party in Fort Worth, Texas. Texas. One, of, one, of, one of the largest voting counties, Republican, one of the largest Republican voting counties in the country. Okay. That's where Tay came from. Okay. So, 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 homie, so when I get online, I gotta talk to the dumb nigga. How I talk to the dumb niggas. The preacher today gotta cuss. Malcolm and Martin couldn't be effective leaders today because they don't cuss. Mm hmm. You got to call that little motherfucker. That's why the teacher can't teach, because the teacher can't cuss. If the teacher can say, man, if y'all don't shut y'all stupid ass up, Jimmy, what sit your little ugly ass down? What for I call your fat ass mama? If you can't talk to the boy baby like that, they, they, they don't receive good education no more. Arithmetic ain't good if you don't tell him, little stupid motherfucker, two times two is four. Let me show you a little dumb ass. Come on. You got to be able to teach like this, homie. Yeah. Because that's how the mamas and daddies teach at home. That's how the mamas and daddies teach at home. From the time a little boy nine months old, he little ugly motherfucker. Shut your dumb ass up. Some little girls is called bitch by their grandmama. Hope by their mama. And you think I'm supposed to come call a little missus when she come out of here? Ain't she a little hoe? Mm -hmm. Ain't she a little hoe, pastor? And, and, and she used to be being called a hoe. She used to be. Every weekend, her and her cousin, them hunches. Come on, act like we ain't, come on, act like we ain't, come on, act like we still ain't fucking our cousin. <laughs> act like we still a nigga, this nigga gone running to the strip club trying to go fuck their nieces. 
Come on, man, let's act like this don't go on no more. The hunching cousin when the when the when the when the party parents get together. I got playing pussy in this building. Come on now, for sure, of, for sure. because <laughs> why they playing? Why they playing grown? Yeah. Well, listen, why they playing grown? We playing grown. The choir room was back then. The choir was warm. shit. <laughs> <laughs> it no. Is. Yes. Oh love. Uh, Brother Charleston. Uh, oh, we that man, up. Uh, Tennessee just recently yeah. updated their laws. And uh, just recently, they changed the law where they allowing teachers to be the right to be able to bear arms and carry amongst class. Oh, uh, well, the superintendent came out today and said, "I was just watching the news this morning." The superintendent said he ain't he, he, his discretion. He's not allowing it. The, su- the superintendent because they should be able to carry pistols, but you still gonna you still have to factor in a human factor, or this motherfucker gonna have attitude one day with this pistol. Not only that, this motherfucker deal with a mama or a daddy who come up with attitude. The the the, 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 the kids go have attitude. Uh, man, one day the motherfucker they might just shoot the pistol. Well, well, no, you gonna get one of these motherfuckers that's kids that I ain't gonna do what the fuck you say. You gonna fuck shoot you. him? Yeah, bitch, and get in your face. You yeah. gonna shoot him? Oh yeah, yeah. Because, but because you will if you have it. If nothing else, get the baseball gun. Man, them motherfuckers, man, them baseball guns are some bad motherfuckers. The niggas, the men, the, the private security niggas in the parking lot rule them niggas ass with them baseball guns. But to put guns in our teachers' hands, no, man, shit, no. Man, uh, our problems are, are not, uh, man, motherfuckers ain't shooting the teachers. Teachers ain't getting shot. Yeah, they having school shooters, but... Man, them white kids. Yeah, I, I ain't never been in a school shooting. Man, I ain't never known for a hood back, to have I'm a school mean. shooting. Because they on guard for okay. a nigga coming with a gun uh, up in that way. They don't let nothing, not anything suspicious in the black community is jumped down on immediately. Mm-hmm. So the things that go on at the white schools that allow the mass school shootings don't go on in a black community. So school shootings is not a black p- people's problem. School, mad school shooters, that's white folk business, so we shouldn't even be worried about that. Our teachers damn near got guns anyway on them. Or in the car? Or in the car. But, man, we need, we need better resource officers. Uh, we, need, we, need, we need beat cops back. We need police to get out their motherfucking car, nigga, and walk and engage the community. Hey, Miss, Miss So-and-so. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Mr. So-and-so? Man, boy, I just talked to your mama the other day. We need beat cops back home. Get man. your motherfucking ass out and walk. And talk to these people. Man, roll them goddamn windows down. So, nah, homie, we, we need uh we need a we need 20 21st uh uh we need 21st century community policing, homie. That 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 old 1990 shit, we need 21st, nah, homie. You gotta engage the people now. And that go for the teachers too. So, do you think segregation was better for you us? You goddamn right it was. And Hell yeah, nigga. When nigga, when we had dirt flows and desks with raggedy books, we were way smarter. With them black teachers, they can whoop your ass. We way smarter, nigga. Going to muddy in them, uh, uh, uh muddy in them goddamn these restaurants, nigga. That didn't have no AC and everybody was sweating, but the food was good. It was healthy. Uh. Yeah, 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 nah, man, we way better off. Yeah, we way better off when we had our own, my nigga. Now we ain't got nothing. I yeah. was in the first year of busing. Okay. What's that? Busing? With segregation, when they took the sign down okay. and let everybody start to go. But I they was, had to bust them niggas. I was over here, oh, okay. my, I was at my Nelson's High School. And I had never seen racism. We had principals that whooped your ass, kicked your ass. Okay, straps, had the wood boards, you get your ass beat. They came and bust us from here to Fraser High School. Damn, we get out there. The white folk, they put us in the back of the auditorium and getting ready to uh, vote for city council. They charge us a poll tax. So I'm the motherfucker that says, that's illegal. 
They did away with that in 1963. How the fuck you gonna do that? Just think about that, homie. That shit we read about in, in our textbooks. Uh, the grandfather clause. If your grandfather, if, they, if he could read or write, then you could vote. Uh, the poll tell him that's historical shit. And just think, nigga, most of y'all don't even know about that. I didn't even know it ended Not in the that. 60s. I, ain't know about that. I had no I idea know the poll tax ended in the 60s, nigga. Because in my mind, nigga, shit is damn near getting fired. <laughs> According to history, if you're reading the history books, homie, shit is damn near getting fired. Because just think, we get the 1964 64 civil rights legislation, we get that act. Then they, they, they amended in 65. So niggas just started voting in the 60s. See, do you know what the nigger act, the nigger act was? I ain't never heard of it. The nigger act, Margaret Sanger, you ever heard of her? Mm-hmm. Okay. Margaret Sanger had a thing called the nigger project. So when the name, and this is 1957, 58, I'm just born. Okay. But I go back and read my history. So you tired of calling niggas niggas. So you call it uh, Planned Parenthood. But the whole purpose was kill a nigga. Okay? So it's they, the eugenics project yeah, that she created. It, it becomes the thing you talk to the black woman. You don't need the black man now. Shit, fuck that. We're going to give you some, some welfare. We're going to put you in the projects. Fuck a nigga. You don't need no man raising your children. The government going to be their dad. We're going to give you all this free shit. And guess what? The black woman fell for that shit. The feminist movement is what he described. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the feminist And movement. they checked every two weeks to make sure that it wasn't, wasn't no nigga in there. Wasn't no man in there. Yeah, it's the feminist movement. Then the white man came out with a symbol act and all that shit. God gave you a titty. As long as the black child was on the titty, he wasn't in prison. Okay? But you, you stop giving him what God wants you to give him. The white man said, okay, damn. Put these chemicals in this bag. Yeah, we're going to put these chemicals in there. And I did a show on that one day. And all that shit that's in there, okay? That's the reason our, our children are fucked up. It is a project by the white man to fuck us up. And guess what? Lazy motherfuckers. So yeah, that's why I go to fucking with these niggas, tell them I'm different, nigga. I was breastfed. Yeah. Nah, nigga, I'm a different kind of nigga than most nigga. I was a breastfed baby, yeah. homie. That's why I excelled in school a little bit more. That's why academically, nigga, nah, health-wise, I was never, nah, I was a breastfed baby. Mm. So it's certain knowledge that I know that I use on niggas. Just now, nigga, most you niggas, nigga, your mama put you in the car seat and you had to sit as a baby and hold your own bottle. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you really drowning with the milk. And the milk be running down and your mama be over there passing the blunt, smoking that black and mild. Because most hoes can't wait to go back to drinking, fucking, and smoking. You serve a sexy red, say that bitch was already fucking. She don't wait six weeks for that pussy to heal. <laughs> bitch won't even wait six weeks for the pussy to heal. Let alone cultivate the body where you don't smoke, you don't drink, so you can at least breastfeed you, baby. Breastfeeding is part of the bonding process of the mama. She gets to talk to the baby, and nigga, this is part of the nurture that niggas don't get. That's why nurture. niggas so detached and can kill so easily. That's what it is. Niggas, all oh, this is something. Niggas, my yeah. Baby. yeah, niggas ain't getting that. Then they not getting fed properly, nigga, so you don't, you're not getting nurtured by mother. Uh, then you don't have the proper nutrition. And then when you get to school, the school got to teach you to read. Mm-hmm. Most niggas, when they get to pre-K and kindergarten, don't know how to read. They cannot say they A, B, C from A to Z, and they can't count to 50. And in this in, generation. In this generation. And they don't write in cursive no more. Well, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's the thing of the past. But I'm just saying, I'm going to think right. about this. Most, if the white man took the public school system from us, how would niggas know how to read? Because we're not coming out knowing how to read. Yeah. How would niggas know how to read? And your mama can't read. And just, come on now. So they controlling the narrative. Shit. Nigga, uh, we, we can rewrite it. We can control it. Nigga Dick Gregory said we can, we the media, we can control the narrative with these cameras now. Nigga, we, can, we all got audience. Nigga, we can rewrite the narrative. 
But we can't rewrite it with nigga like Pistol Starter with that bullshit. We can't rewrite it, nigga, if every time we cut this bitch on, we squabbling, we fighting, and it ain't no substance. So what was the situation happened. that went on? Oh, uh, oh uh, man, Superior Shop had been trying to get me to come do come come do an interview. They got a badass studio set up. Uh, you know, they, they they bless all the black celebrities. We know we close when we come through, so nigga appreciate them. You know, that's a good good brand partnership to have, collaboration mm -hmm. to have. So uh nigga I charged ten thousand for an interview. Uh on 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 tape uh product. Nigga, I, I like money. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so uh I do the interview but I know that when I get in the store, I really think he worked for the people the way he following us around the store. And he steady poking at me, saying little slick stuff. When I say something, he say something. So he said, he walk up on me and said, yeah, what you go by me? You go, yeah, yeah, what you go by me? So I, I, I know this kind of energy. You know, come on, homie. Uh, me and my nigga, why you poking at me? Because you must think I'm a weenie. For you to handle an older nigga that you think is older than you, homie, and I'm supposed to, I'm unk. For you to try to handle, you the type of nigga beat up unk in the household. The dope fiend uncle. You the type of nigga, you the young nigga who beat up the drunk nigga on the stove that's talking shit on the drunk night. So he steady fucking with me. So I tell him, say, nigga, I don't buy no nigga nothing, nigga. Fuck, I look like buying a nigga something. Nigga, you, y'all start telling me, you must be one of them hoes. So I showed the nigga a little respect. He steady walking around the store fucking with me. So we get in the interview room. I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe they do this podcast together. I don't know who this nigga is. So, yeah, man, uh, how you feel about Memphis? What kind of goddamn question is that? Well, how I feel about Memphis? Come on, my nigga. What you mean? How, nigga, why would I feel anything about Memphis? So as we go on to talk, I see he ain't got no substance. And, and, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. You know what I mean? Why they got me. And the nigga say, well, let me ask you this. What would you do if, if I slap you? The nigga, you would die? i stab your motherfucking ass to death, nigga. Why you sitting here with no weapon? <laughs> Nigga, I got mace too, nigga. Yeah, so I'm thinking, yeah, nigga, you are getting hurt playing, nigga. But, nigga, what make another man ask another man? And it was just out the blue. Just out the blue. So, yeah, nigga, so my nigga come through. I don't know my nigga out there, but my nigga feel some kind of way too. So he bust through the door. Nah, nigga, ain't nobody slapping on, nigga. So I see the nigga. I already see the nigga weenie. Yeah, I already see the nigga one of them kind of niggas, homie. So I see him kind of, oh, you know, shake my nigga hand. No, nah, nigga, keep that same energy. So I tell him, nigga, no, nah, go outside. Nigga, keep acting like I'm by myself. Yeah. So uh, I get mad and, and, and shut the interview down because I see this ain't going nowhere. And, I, and I'm mad about this whole ass nigga talking about what it, if I, yeah. So uh, I'm still trying to figure out, man, why the nigga got me on here to, you know, try to do me like this. So I had already told the superior shop. Y'all might need to do some research on me, homie, because they made a comment on the viral video when I was speaking in city council. Uh, so I, I, I told them, nigga, y'all might want to do some research on me since y'all talking about interviewing me. So they let me know they ain't really do no research. Did, did, he, did he ever end up trying to slap your uh, president uh, in the jail? Uh, I ain't in jail. Oh, they just... <laughs> I, I ain't in jail. Nigga tried to slap me, homie, I'm going to stab him. The, the, the attempt, you, ain't, you don't get to try to slap me. Nigga, I'm out on two bonds because the nigga slapped me. Nigga, I'm out on two felony bonds right now because nigga hit me. Nigga, you ain't gonna get to do nothing to me and I don't respond. No, no, I ain't one of them kind of nigga. We both go get cut or something. So uh, I get up and leave. He try to come back and apologize afterwards. But nigga, don't do that in front of the camera. And then when the camera go off, you want to try to come apologize. Oh, nah, bitch ass nigga. So now I'm real disrespectful because I see you a hoe now, nigga. Mm -hmm. So now I'm very disrespectful, nigga. And I got the video. So when I wake up this morning and see they done run to the internet with this video, I call Superior Shop. So I, I feel like they done played on me. Yeah, I feel like Superior Shop and a nigga because I'm looking at the comment section. Uh, and I'm seeing people in the comments saying, he must don't know pistol play like that. I'm seeing people say, well, man, you can't play with everybody like that. So they were playing. Mm -hmm. They were trying to get a viral moment on, on at Superior Shop. Oh, so I'm reading the comments saying, okay, this is what he do. He play. I don't play, nigga. You know, I'm a very serious nigga. Yeah, I play online. But nigga, in real life, nigga, you going to get all of us hurt playing. 
Yeah, so that's why that's why that's why I try not to do uh that's why I charge so much goddamn money for an interview and they pay it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They pay it. Nigga, I, I don't get nothing less than ten thousand dollars for an interview. That's amazing. Yeah, that's so, a blessing too, though, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now, nah, homie. So uh, yeah, I, I feel very insulted, but I understand. Uh, I'm sitting down with not my kind nor my people, the superior shoppers, Arabs. Okay. They, yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. they'll pay. Yeah, yeah, but they had they getting a free interview. I'm just they trying to play on me for a free interview though, and I, I'm trying to develop. I'm trying to develop a good business relationship because I like their clothes, but I see they playing on me. Yeah. I'm playing dumb. I want to see who go fuck over me. See, I show up playing dumb. Because nigga, the old niggas always told me ignorance prevail. So when I get around white folks, I play ignorant. I play ignorant nigga. I do not let white folks know how really smart I am. I play like I can't read. I play like I'm dumb. I say I got locked up in the eighth grade when I'm 14 years old for killing a white man. I let white folks know that. See, that's why I think I'm superior to niggas. Because I know what it's like to stand over a white man and watch him die. You stood over. I stood over as a little bitty boy, nigga. I gave my nigga the gun and said, shoot that bitch. And they got in the car. I didn't get in the car because I always wanted to see how white folk look when they die. So a nigga can't talk to me. A nigga can't say a motherfucking thing to me, nigga. And you done shot. I ain't never shot a gun at a nigga. Pastor, then, Pastor Thaddeus. What, what, what you think about that uh, shooting that went on at OMI? Did you hear about that? Uh, they kids go suffer for it. Uh, because those were ignorant black people, nigga. See, the law is you can kill a white person, you can kill a black, you can kill a Mexican, you can kill an Asian, you can kill a Jew, but thou should not kill they own. Thou should not look at another black man's wife. You can look at a white man's wife and fantasize about fucking them. You can steal out of a white person's store and God not be mad at you. It's thou should not steal from your brother. Nigga, if you want to go shoot up, go across the railroad tracks on Bell Street and do all that shooting. You tough-ass gangster motherfucking nigga. You a weak motherfucker shooting with your people. Because you know women and children out here. Go make them white folk. Go make them white babies jump on the ground, nigga. That's what we did. Nigga, we used to pull up at white folk car wash and just shoot in the crowd. Nigga, take out running. We didn't get white women coming. I swear to God, my nigga. I did seven and a half years. We, nigga, we went to the white folks' mall. Yeah, because they were white. Cause they, cause that, that's because they were white. I was taught, go across the railroad tracks. He was born in the 50s. I was born in the 70s. Niggas didn't start voting in 65, 66, 67. Nigga, I'm coming to 70. So I got them niggas anger toward white folks. Y'all got the gang banging niggas hate. I got the old niggas hate toward white folks. So I come out of my mama's house committing crimes, snatching old white women person. And if she don't let it go, we go break her nose. If she fall on the ground, we go stomp that old white bitch. <laughs> I swear to God, we grew up raping white girls, homie. I don't see, I don't see. We grew up raping white girls. She want to fuck one nigga, she fucked his whole house. And ain't nobody asking, can we fuck? Take we standing over her head, seven dicks. Yeah, right. She, 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 it's dick everywhere. My turn, my turn, my nigga. Oh, I'm there. I swear to God. Then she would come back. We would still out. Nah, homie, this is what we did to white people. We didn't know the gang banging until gang banging showed up. We didn't know you rob a nigga. Men go rob them white people stores. They got the money anyway. They got the money anyway. And we taking it out on them. Because we didn't have no other anger toward nothing else before then. See, gangbanging came and introduced uh, some unknown hate. Hate the nigga because he got on red. Nigga, that was new. Yeah, that was some new shit. It took a while for a nigga to grab that shit. <laughs> it was our way get the white man and rob the Mexicans. Get the white man, rob the Mexicans. Get you a white girl, nigga. While, while you and her fucking her and her friend... The rest of the buddies is still in her mama jewelry box. What's the most you ever took from a white person? Oh, uh, everything. They life. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Every, and we done went and robbed everything out their house. They pussy. Nah, nigga, we was taken. 
How many of y'all was it? Oh, uh, just like the, the gang gang niggas, four, five, six in the group. <laughs> and we'll tackle a white hoe walking home at night, niggas, because we thought, <laughs> nigga, we, because we saw it on television. We saw the white boy used to come into the black community, catch, her, catch him a black girl walking, grab her, put her in the truck, take her off and rape her. So we was wanted to do to them what was done to us. This is what we were taught from our uncles. Nigga, we had some, I had a, I had a mean, angry uh, white folk. Man, my grandmama hate white people. Nigga, my grandmama hate white people in Mexico. I got uncles, man, nah, homie. Nigga, I got, nah, nigga, I got uncles, uh, nigga, that, that, that done horrible things. I mean, when, when, when I was growing up, I ain't even, it was, it was a while before I even seen a white person. To me, like, when I registered, hey, How old are you, man? 29. Yeah, oh, man, we in our 40s. You know, man, what you talking about? Nigga, I'm, I'm, born in, I'm 67, man. Shit. So I can't do all this bullshit. So you got to think, homie. I, my uncle's name is telling us, nigga, you go across the river. Go over there and do that, nigga. They teaching us how to snatch a woman white girl purr. You catch the one walking up out of there with it, up on Because the one with the strap might try to grab it. And if you hit her in her nose, she'll let it go. And it worked. It's a young a new nigga. <laughs> okay, y'all don't know shit. Y'all don't know nothing about killing each other. Yeah, y'all don't know how cool white folks really are. See, nigga, they, they try to be cool, doesn't they? Oh, uh, they always try to be cool. They ain't no, nigga. That's part of the cruelness. That's part of their cruelness, nigga. That's their password. Some of my best friends are black, and Hope. they pay you, nigga. Nigga, they had a favorite nigga. And they made a show he stayed in the family. And him and his kids stayed they slaves forever because he was their favorite nigga. They really loved him, so they never would let him go free. It sound like Michael Ward situation. Happen? You know who Michael Ward is, don't you? Nah, nah, enlighten me. The, the nigga from Blindside. Okay, the, that's the, out of Memphis. He from Memphis. You yeah. heard of Blindside Michael Ward. They suing him. Well, he suing them. He suing him because they kept the money. <laughs> So now, nah, homie, oh, uh, no, they did. Oh, uh, now, nah, homie, it, it wasn't. It wasn't until I started getting in trouble with the law that I realized that it was some compassionate white people. So that was God's plan that because my mother had experienced compassionate white people, and I'm listening. Say, now, nah, mama, white, now, nah, mama, young. Because I, because my mother was so loving, I thought she didn't know what she was talking about. Son, God ain't got no respect to person. You lying to me? He like white people, mama. But my uncle, so, so, nigga, so, one of, one of, one of my first, uh, one of my brother first probation officer was a white boy named Kelly Willis. He was a compassionate white man. But, when I started getting in trouble with, with the law, I remember learning about John Brown. A white woman taught me about John Brown and what he did for niggas. The abolitionists, right? So I learned about John Brown from a white woman. So as I began to get in trouble with the law as a kid, I had a white compassionate judge. Uh, judge Moore, uh, Judge Gene Boyd. Uh, so when we caught the murder case, homie, and, and, and so I, I grew up in the system. I, I spent my whole teenage life in the boys' home from 14 to 21, but I went back to court at 18. So. I have, the, the state recommendation was for me to be transferred to the adult prison system because they got gang banged the whole time while I was locked up. I was having fun. Them niggas trying to go home. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I was bullshit. I was bullshit. Uh, but I had four, I had four staff members. Back then we called them house parents. Today they're called juvenile correction officers. So I had four house parents. It was two white women and two black men. Miss Pumple, Mr. Rocha, uh, Mr. Nelson, and Mr. Mathis. Uh, Mr. Nelson was a mean ass preacher nigga. Then none of us like him. He was strict in the motherfucker. Mr. Matthews was more like a cool uncle. But nigga, Miss, Miss Pumple and, and, and Miss DeRosa was two white women just off the surface you would think was racist because how they look. Nigga, these, these the backwoods white people. Hmm. Uh, nigga, they put their jobs on the line to come back and testify on my behalf. Uh, nigga, and, and they ain't had nothing good to say, homie. Uh, I had got my GED uh, and, and I had completed a chemical dependency treatment program. Uh, other than that, nigga, I hadn't done nothing good in four years. So, uh, they saw potential. So, nigga, they put their jobs on the line uh, to come back and testify on my behalf and, and tell the judge that, man, this kid got potential to be somebody. 
And I remember the judge saying, well, well, how do you guys know that based on what I'm looking at? She said, based on what you're looking at, Your Honor, his negative leadership skills. Man, this, guy, this, guy, this kid got it. So just based on that, homie, so when, when, they, when they done that, and, and so the, the state recommitted me back into the custody of the youth commission instead of transferring me into the adult prison system. All my niggas got transferred into the adult prison system. Them niggas spent 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 years, nigga, for shit they did when they was 12, 13, and 14. Mm. I had just done four. So they recommitted me back, and I done three more. So I done a seven-year sentence on 12 years for murder. Uh, but I stayed in the juvenile system. That's when that's when I realized uh, that, that, that some of the help God sin ain't gonna look like us. And, and you can't be angry and you can't be hateful. Uh, because once I really looked at it, nigga, I'm like you. I ain't never experienced no racism. I just been sitting up listening to my uncles. I ain't never experienced no motherfucking racism, nigga. I heard about it. Yeah. So I really had no real justification to be mad at white people. None whatsoever. Because here I am in the court system, nigga, and I'm getting favor from white people. And my mama's, you know, mama's saying that the judge, that they can do this. And I'm saying, man, can't nobody change white people's heart because I'm listening to the old angry niggas. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking ain't nothing bigger than white people listening to the old niggas. Until my mama started talking about God. And even then, I thought God, was, I thought white people were bigger than God as a kid. I thought white people were bigger than God. Jesus was white on every picture. But that sees the boy's year, though. Because but as a kid, you don't know this information. You go try to explain to the black poor nigga babies that the, the picture of Jesus is Caesar Bulgaria. They can't the grasp that. That's who they they can't grasp that. Nigga, I'm a kid trying to process God. So how that makes <coughs> sense? And you got, and, every, and, and uh, if, your, if your mama talk about God, but the courts are saying what the white man ain't going to let you go do. So if God can do this, but the black people saying, well, the white man ain't going to let you do that. The white, black people make white people seem like a God. Cause white, black people make it seem like white people can't be beat. And I'm telling you, nigga, I done killed the white man and I ain't got nothing on my record, so I can beat white folks. You can't. White folk couldn't stop me from doing nothing, nigga. Why'd you kill the uh, white person? Nigga, cause we was kids. We can't tell you why we did it. Nigga, we just had a gun. Damn. We can't tell, and, 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 and he tried to stop us from stealing the jackets. So many time you put a gun in the kid's hand, homie, I mean, you can't never get no logical explanation on why they did nothing with a gun. Why you shoot it, man? We don't know. You know, speaking of that, a girl, you just recently shared the story about it. The girl killed the boy over forty-seven dollars and spent the money on two two hot wings. No, he. She killed him over the man over sixty dollars. He wanted to buy some pussy. Instead of her saying, no, I ain't selling my pussy, she took him to the park, got the $60. Didn't give him no pussy. Didn't give him no pussy. And she shot him. She killed him. He should have shot her. It's a plot twist, though. And, and, and then. He should have shot that bitch. This robber now. Then <laughs> she went and got her and her nigga. Some chicken wing. Two hot wing combo. They should have killed that bitch. <laughs> they should have killed that <laughs> bitch. But my mama turned her in. She's supposed to. the news that night. He supposed to kill that bitch. called in. Bitch, you done took my sister. You done led me over her. I <laughs> and I ain't got no pussy. He supposed to kill her. And explain to the jury this was a crime of passion. That way he still be alive. Yeah, no. It, it, that, sadly. It That's why you don't buy us that. The lesson is... Yeah, you don't buy a $60 pussy. <laughs> Damn. If anything else will be learned that is, you don't buy a $60 pussy. Pussy ain't got no bid to be in $60. That's danger anyway. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah, man, I don't feel bad for nobody in that situation. Yeah, yeah, if I die doing what I want to do, don't nobody feel sad. The nigga died doing what he want to do, buying pussy. He just didn't get the pussy. <laughs> She was hungry. She showed me. I can use that on my goddamn show. Yeah, man, you better not be mad at me, man. Y'all catch me doing what I like to do, and I, then I come up dead. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he man, that nigga died doing what he liked to do. <laughs> what was your thoughts when you first saw Charleston White, when you first seen him on the internet? I don't think he was as smart as this, this motherfucker is, okay? 
But then I don't like dumb motherfuckers no way. Me neither. <laughs> yeah. okay. You know, niggas is just dumb. I don't even fuck with them. Okay? But he's a smart motherfucker. Now, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. I'm going to use this one my goddamn show. Oh. Um, <laughs> See, man, I, I came to the internet to turn pe people like the pastor off because I, I didn't. I, I wanted to be a villain, man. Man, what? Wait a minute. What you say about that motherfucker? This killed that motherfucker for sixty dollars. He should have killed that bitch at first. He'll still be alive, and don't be mad because he died doing what he wanted to do, buying pussy. Oh <laughs> <laughs> shit! His mama and everybody supposed to be happy. <laughs> He died happy. Huh? Now he didn't get the pussy, so he wasn't happy. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a dead motherfucker. Yeah, but he died doing what he liked to do. Buy a pussy. So, so it's a pussy. Yeah, buy a pussy. And that, this shouldn't be a big $60 pussy. He should have known that was some danger. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, one way or another, he should have known that was danger. I, I, the mama believed that uh, the nigga that she <laughs> bought the chicken for really <coughs> pulled the trick. Yeah, that's why they. Because she him walked down. off, and they did her. That, that's shot. why. That's why she led him to the park, and and she was selling pussy. She just wasn't selling pussy. That's the hook and crook game that the young nigga with the. But that's the first time. She that, that's that boyfriend. So, listen, that's that boyfriend pimping shit. Yeah. It's, a lot, it's, a, it's the boyfriend pimp boy shit. Pimpin'. That's the boyfriend pimping. Nigga done sent the bitch. He really don't want a nigga fucking on this bitch because he's feeling some kind of way. She really want to fuck. Yeah. She really, but he feeling some kind well, of way. She told the police. I'm money thirsty. <laughs> and she dick hungry too. Because the whole plan like she's selling pussy, man, it's a thrill in the field in that too. Yeah, man, that right dick get up and now for that sixty dollars, it's a double whammy. <laughs> she done got paid and she come. Damn. So man, I don't bitch now nah, both of them. So you be so you think bitches like selling pussy? Yes. Yeah, hell yeah. And it shouldn't be against the law. Nah, and they shouldn't feel shame about God it. gave you that pussy. And you shouldn't be shamed about it. Yeah. They shouldn't no hope be shamed by selling pussy. Se Niggas <laughs> supposed to sell dick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you they call the jiggle on. <laughs> Nah, see, these niggas just know about pimping. They don't know about macking and jiggle on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, niggas get stuck on pimping and end up on dope beating up bitches. Most, the most niggas elevate the macking. They can go play on whatever kind of stage. So, nah, nigga, nah, nigga don't know nothing about jiggle on. That's when you, yeah, nigga, you, yeah, you, yeah, playing, yeah. You get you somewhere to stay with that dick. You get your clothes with that dick. You get your car with that dick. You get your credit fixed with that dick. Uh, and nigga, you run off with that dick. <laughs> After you done got everything fixed with that dick, then you'll be called a low down, dirty, rotten motherfucker. Cause you done, yeah, you done played with that dick. Damn. That's a skill. That's a skill most niggas ain't got though. I ain't got it. Yeah, I'm a Mac. Yeah, yeah, I'm a Mac pass everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm a Mac. Yeah, that jiggle old nigga, what, he got, he got the Or uh, conversation, talking. Yeah, yeah, proper instruction. Yeah, rude nation. Man, conversation, talking. Yeah. Nigga, that's at the boardroom or, or on a job. You done talk your way on a job. You done got downtown. Yeah, talking, huh? Talking. Yeah, the old nigga say you lay there and talk. You let them see it. You let them feel it, but you don't give it to them. Hmm. You lay there and talk, nigga. You let them feel that dick. You let them see that dick, but you don't give it to them. You get everything you want. Yeah, learn how to borrow the money. Learn how to borrow the money, nigga, and then give them back some of their own money like you done went and done something with the money. But make sure you give them back their money. Make sure, yeah, that was them the instructions from the old nigga. That's the map. You know, we got a lot of pimping going on here. A whole lot. I know. I used to come to here, nigga, jumping off the bus station. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, some, and it's still some gorilla pimping around this motherfucker. Yeah, 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 because these some gorilla hoes. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, man, but see, homie, that's, uh, that's a curse. Oh, that's a curse, uh, that, that, it's a dark cloud that, that sits over Memphis. Because, nigga, nobody's more gangster, uh, nobody's more hardcore in street than the hoe baby. That's why it's a hard motherfucking place, nigga. It's a lot of hoe babies. That's why it's a lot of cold-hearted niggas that'll kill you, nigga. They done watch their mama do some things. They done heard to nah, my nigga. So that's what that's what that, that's what make Memphis so dangerous. So so you know, go read the book, uh, Donald Goins' book, man, Horse Son. A whole son is a cold motherfucker, boy. Just like that dope fiend baby. That dope fiend baby, 
or, or cut your throat. He'll rob you, he'll kill you, he'll cross you because your mama was a dope fiend. A nigga who mama was a hoe, or a nigga, them some of the most prolific gangsters that you ever know in the streets. So that's what make Memphis so dangerous. It's a bunch of hoe babies. Yeah, because if your daddy was a pimp, your mama was a hoe. Say, man. Say, man. It ain't how you say, man. Say, man. Say, man. <laughs> <laughs> say, what's understood ain't got to be explained. So, uh, nigga, if you want to heal Memphis, homie, uh, nigga, we got to. Nigga, we got to. Yeah, nigga, we got to kill the pimp. Uh, nigga, because just imagine, my nigga. Uh, the nigga, a nigga who know his mama is a hoe. Nigga in school, he a different kind of kid. Amongst other niggas, he a different kind of kid, homie. Uh, that's some pain, nigga, that make a nigga drop his head. And we got Mother's Day coming up. Mm. Oh, you got you got these old niggas <coughs> saying some profound shit on here. Damn, we're wicked promoting the bullshit that this, this ain't no Max Snoop, none of that fuckery, none of that. Like, I, ain't, I, I, I ain't see, I'm gonna see, uh, uh, see, that's why I don't do free interview. Uh, I don't need the clout chase, homie. Uh, nigga, uh, I sell out everywhere I go. So, so, uh, Nigga, pay for the character. If you want the character, you want to do a skit, let me in on it. Yeah, let me in on it, my nigga. Uh, but that's why I try to fuck with my kind. That's why I don't do no more Vlad TV. That nigga, I fuck with my kind because my kind ain't gonna put me in this situation to try to project me in this light. Yeah. Because my kind know how valuable I am. What I understand, homie, they not our kind. Any nigga come up in Memphis talking about he a Muslim ain't my kind. Nigga, as much pork grandmama and them had to feed us, nigga, to get us here where we is. How much praying they done done the motherfucking visitation room, nigga, showing up in them court with that, oh, thank you, Lord, when they get cut a nigga, man, you better get your motherfucking ass away from me, nigga. Yeah. Nigga, they done hallelujah, you know, church, church, nigga, nigga, fuck you. When grandma and them started hiding our salama lake when, when they were feeding us, nigga, they now, nah, nigga, fuck you. <laughs> so I know my kind. I love my people, but nigga, I'm looking for my kind. And how you identify your kind? By their motherfucking actions? My kind don't kill one another. My kind, we don't fuck each other women, nigga. I don't even look at each other girls. No, no. Yeah, no, nah, my nigga. So I'm looking for my kind. I don't give a fuck about black people. Black people kill black people. Niggas didn't. Mm. Niggas didn't kill niggas. Now, a nigga might tell on you when you got ready to run away to stop all those niggas from getting beat when you ran away. Mm. Yeah, we might give you up so we all don't get beat, nigga. They might sell my daughter because you running. Yeah, I'm going to tell on you, nigga. So fuck you. You think somebody told and gave a drop on Martin Luther King while he was here? You seen all Absolutely. the niggas out on the back? He <laughs> couldn't have got out there. Oh, shit. <laughs> you, oh, you too young to listen to me. Don't talk to him, Pastor. See, talk to him, Pastor. I did the goddamn show. He did? I had the nigga that came, a white boy came to me and said that it was his brother that killed King. But how he killed was the niggas. Trick your mouth, man. How he get out there, Look, nigga? Jesse let me tell you something. Room up, though. Look, let me tell you something. When Martin was coming to Memphis, you know where that tall uh, building is on Riverside? It used to be the Rivermont. It used to be the mm -hmm. Holiday Inn Rivermont. Okay? That's why King stayed. So when King got in 68, when he was coming to Memphis, Jesse got him to change the room. Put him on the balcony. Now, now I, I know you, I'm a target. So you're going to put me in the Lorraine Hotel where they sell pussy. And I know they sold pussy because I used to go there and buy pussy. And, they, they, and that okay. whole, them niggas like to fuck with hoes too. And, 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 and they put him in the goddamn front of the building with a mural glass. Now, God damn. Here the uh, fire station where the shot was supposed to come. Now, you got all these niggas out here 
you got uh, Bitter Cows. You remember him? Mm -hmm. Bitter Cows. And Dick Gregory did a show. Because years later, Cows, and he got purged. He was speaking. As I was sitting on the, standing on the balcony, and I moved out of the way so that the assassin could get a good, good shot. shot. That's what he said. Pastor. He said that in a lie. He said, yeah. yeah, he said that Told in a lie. Told on himself. Told on himself. And tried to clean it up. And he had made thousands of dollars off of just being with King. He said he's live in the interview? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Did Greg recall it? Man, and they going out to Diddy? Keep in mind. Oh uh, well, well, uh, Dr. King family sued the government. Homie. People don't people don't know that homie. They, the government was found culpable and liable of, of having King assassinated. William Pepper wrote a book about it called Yo, State. Yeah, State. Yeah, and he they, named the two shooters. They name was Frank Strasser and Earl Clark, two snipermen from the Memphis Police Department. Serious. Same My boy, uh, Jim Grill was in on it too. And the next day, what did the city come out and do, Pastor? I know you heard. What did the city come out and do? Where they took the shot? They cut the grassy, the grassy yeah. knoll down. The same, next same, day, uh, same, yeah. same with Malcolm. Homie, the nigga, one, one of the guys on the scene of Malcolm who was with Malcolm the whole time was a New York police officer that they never did. Now, nah, homie, so yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I had a motherfucker tell me, oh, uh, that 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 worked with cybersecurity from the government. Uh, he, he met me at the airport. Uh, and yeah, he told me, yeah, the law enforcement. And he said it's gonna be black law enforcement. Scared the shit out of me. And he said, I'm I'm tracking you for the right reading, but they tracking you for the motherfucker told me this at the airport. Blew my motherfucking mind. Uh I said, man, give me your phone number. <laughs> he he wouldn't give me his phone number. He told me to take a picture of it. He told me don't put it in your phone. Take a picture of it. Uh yeah, yeah, blew my motherfucking mind. Yeah, James Earl Ray was the fall guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. When you get in history right here, boy. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, too, yeah, right? yeah, nah, I, I wanted to, uh, I, I wanted to bless your game, uh, because in, in, in the midst of what happened yesterday, uh, we connected with the spirit of, of one of your artists, homie. And, yeah, and, you Ferrari. Know, nigga, Shout uh, out to Ferrari, too, man. Yeah, and, and he waited around, homie, uh, yeah, yeah, he, he waited around, man. And shout out to Rayful, man. Yeah, goddamn, he's the wing king. Give me, give me, give me a uh, factory Rayful. drop. Too. Yeah, Rayful. Okay. Yeah, yeah, my boy. Give me a drop for the factory. Oh, uh, the factory. Say, man, what's up? This your boy Charles the White, man. I'm sitting next to my man, Mr. Pastor, Reverend Pastor, the cussing preacher, man, over here at the factory, man, in Memphis, Tennessee. Where are we at? North Memphis. <laughs> 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 that North, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah. I yeah. appreciate that. I already love. Well, man. here, let me get a drop for my. I'm on five radio stations too, so I'm on Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, you are, you are modern day Petey Green. Yeah, you the new. I didn't know, man. I didn't know you was on the radio. I thought you were just a frustrated pastor like me. I'm frustrated. I'm a, but but you but you but uh but you got radio background, right? Forty-seven years. You are Petey Green. Yeah, yeah, you are Petey Green. Give me a drop. Oh, uh, let's do it. Uh, Pathetic Matthews show and syndicated radio, radio show. I, I'm, I let me know you're ready. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Charleston White, aka. Wait, 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 wait. Let me start. Okay. okay. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Charleston White, aka Rat William, aka Mr. Call, and put your ass in jail. I'm sitting over here on the Thaddeus Matthews radio station and Seneca show as well. And wherever you want to put this drop in, man, I love the pastor. He's my new reverend, and I want to be his deacon. And I'm gonna baptize you too. Yeah, you go baptize me too, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to get you on May 18th. I'm trying to get you on May 18th. If not, we're bringing it right here to Memphis. I'm going to dip your time. ass down in the wall. Man, got me. if we can go to a lake and do it like Jesus, then really done it. I ain't going to no motherfucking lake. <laughs> All right, then Shit. we do it. If the water warm or cold at the church, you go back to it. It's going to be cold. It's supposed to chill your body, but not your soul. All right, I got you then. Let's make it happen then, Pastor. Fix your chain, OG. Man, you ain't supposed to call me, man. You ain't doing the shit, man. You know?